Got it. <laughs> mm. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so happy to be here, um, here with Art Toolkit. My name is Maria Coriel Martin. I'm the founder of Art Toolkit. And joining us today is April Wu. April, <laughs> so glad to have you here. And um, I feel like I think we've known each other for at least a year now and um, have had the pleasure of getting to sketch together in person. And I'm completely inspired by your work. You are like a journaler, a sketcher, and passionate about stationery. You host the Stationery Cafe podcast to explore journaling habits and materials and techniques. And I feel like you bring together some different worlds of sort of stationery and journaling, and then also urban sketching in really wonderful ways. So um, I'm just so happy to have you with us um, today. And to get a chance to, to learn a little bit about some of your sketchbook plans and the process of what, what you've described to us, this, this Kaigi, kind of a meetup and opportunity of reflection of um, journals and sketchbooks. Thank you for having me. It's such a great start to the new year to be on Art Toolkit. And then like a lot of us, me, myself, and my our friends mm -hmm. in the community has like these goals this year to like paint more, draw more. So I thought this demo is like just a perfect timing to help me share my resolve out loud so people can keep me accountable too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really happy to be here. Um, and some people might know me as Penguins Creative on Instagram, by the way, just, just in case. That's where I share most of my drawings, my, my journaling things. And the Stationery Cafe podcast is a, a hobby of mine that started uh, right before the pandemic. And like through it, like you said, I've been able to like merge the hobby of art, urban sketching with stationery, with like personal, you know, art, art projects together. And it's just, this has grown to something so big. So I'm really happy to see people in chat <laughs> like that I know in the community, but then also like new faces and people from the urban sketching world. So hello. Yeah. And I should mention you're based in Seattle, which is where I grew up and we're not too far. So maybe we'll get to do some more in-person stuff someday because that would be really fun. And then those of you in the area, we would love to see you and everyone else calling in from far away. We're just so happy to have you here too. And put a note in the chat that we'd love to see where you're calling in from. It's just been so fun to build up more of this creative community. So thank you so much for being here. Um, well, April, do you want to give us kind of a little show and tell of what you've got today? I've gotten a peek at your desk situation and it, the pile is high, just delightfully high. And um, like two piles, this is not all of it, but like I grabbed some components of my sketchbook and notebook today uh, to, to share the sketchbook, Kaigi, as we're calling it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, do you want to start with some of the supplies you use and then jump to your journals? And maybe you can describe too, I know we mentioned in the description a bit about Kaigi, but some of your experiences with it. Maybe let's start with talking about Kaigi and then we'll go into the notebooks and then maybe the supplies. Oh, actually, no, supplies first, then the notebooks, but Perfect. Kaigi first. <laughs> Perfect. And those of you, um, if you have any questions that come up, those of you who are joining us, go ahead and write them in the chat. I'll be keeping an eye on it and we'll... Um, um, do our best to 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 get to everything we can. <laughs> I'll do a face down first and let me know Perfect. if I'm at the right orientation because that happened last time and I'm really nervous. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> everything's looking right. Um, so yeah. yeah, I have so many things on the table right now. A kaigi, uh, a word we borrow from Jap a Jap Japanese term that means meeting. <laughs> but in the stationary world, we had adopted this concept called techo kaigi every year, right before the new year or around uh, September to November, which is when people start buying their diary or journals for the next year. And the, the process of kaigi, a meeting, you know, attached with techo, which, mean, which means notebook and journal, is basically a time where you sit down and like reflect on what notebooks or journals work for you in the past and like how, which ones would you want to use in the future? And that's like a problem for us in the stationery community because we want to use so many books. So we needed this meeting with ourselves to stop ourselves from buying too much. Um, and I think it like actually applies perfectly in the art, like sketchbook world, because 
I would love to see how many sketchbooks people in chat has. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a challenge. <laughs> Please list the numbers. And I'm sure it's not uncommon for a, a lot of us to have like probably more than five sketchbooks. Like so, active sketchbooks? Or are we talking about the stacks that we Right, have? exactly. So, <laughs> which is why I think this is like the perfect opportunity to kind of explore, hey, let's move the Kaigi concept to us as hobbyists or artists or people who does art on the side and like think about what do we like how how are we prioritizing which sketchbooks how are we you know thinking about it and um stuff like that oh the view is reversed is this reversed right now are you guys reading travelers or the other way around um let's see i just see a note in the chat that the view is reversed again so maybe if you want to okay um, let me Last time we were on the video, we we were we had encountered this. So we'll, we'll get it right this time. Thanks for the heads up. Okay, as long as you guys are seeing it the right way, then that's good. <laughs> Maybe what happens is that in the live stream, it's reversed. And then when it's saved, it's not reversed. That could also be a situation too. But it's okay. We're not reading anything today. So even if it's reversed, it should be fine. <laughs> so are we, are we at the right orientation? <laughs> um, let's see. We'll... I think we're still reversed if you want to flip your camera. I just flipped it. You just flipped it. Okay. I'll give a heads up. We've got um five active <laughs> sketchbooks. Okay. Nice. Um it looks like we're still reversed. I'm so sorry. Can you flip your camera back? So okay, I will flip the back. Ooh, sorry. Too many stuffs. Thanks, we everybody. Go. We're getting night, lots of feedback from folks. Um, if it's still reversed, then I can't do anything about it because I click mirrored and I'm mirrored twice. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing a change on my end. So we might just have to we might just have to put up with it because I it looks backwards to me too on my screen. So um well, let's let's pray and hope that the video comes out right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, All maybe right. that doesn't affect it, huh? Yeah. To choose video. Let me see. The ball cam. All right. Well, we'll deal with the reverse. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, they're saying, don't worry. We'll just roll with it. <laughs> We're rolling with it. <laughs> so um, back to the topic of sketchbook Kaigi, you know, I feel like it was a great opportunity for me to kind of reflect on like, hey, I have so many sketchbooks, over 10 maybe. <laughs> Which ones do I want to start using or pick back up on and like why and how and and I felt like I actually apply um, the concept of like sketching and doodling really actively in my personal journaling practice. And, and how can I do that for my sketchbooks and my art practice as well? So um, that's why I was thinking like today is a good chance for me to kind of go through, go talk through that, reflect on my supplies, and then walk you guys through my, my thought process about sketchbook Kaigi and like how to maybe build a practice yourself on either on your sketchbook or somewhere else through journaling so well, that's where we're going to get started supplies first because that's the most important part <laughs> awesome all right I think I think this is it um uh, hold on let me move this here there we go move that in oh oh wow it just reversed for me Wow. Okay. Maybe oh. that, maybe that'll work. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you just rotate through your sketchbooks until they're eventually. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it for me as well. So I have my favorite art supplies. I have also way too many palettes to count, but I do enjoy art toolkit the most because of how compact they are. Um, for example, when I go out for urban sketching sessions or I'm just at my desk, you know, it's nice to have something kind of small and flat. So in this small uh, art toolkit pouch, I have um, my staples, which is uh, waterproof black liners, 
This one specifically is the uni pin fine line, and I like it in 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 1.2. And then, you know, obviously some pencils for, for drafts, um, rough drafts. I really love the these portable kind of, what do you call it, bullet um, portable brushes. Oh, beautiful travel brushes. Yeah, yeah oh, travel, I love travel, travel brushes, brushes too. Mm -hmm. I had some from Escoda, but I've been really loving the Rosemary and Co. And I saw that you guys are carrying the Red Dot series now. So I'm like, yeah. I could stock up on some more. Um, so I have these. And my favorite brush size is the uh, number six. It's just like a standard for me. It can draw huge strokes and it could do details as well when it's like thinned out. Like my personal at-home brushes are these. And like, I think three of them are number six. Rosemary, Da Vinci, Escoda, um, and, you know, your regular Princeton. So these are the typical sizes I go for, some mop size brushes, flat brushes. I love round. I rarely use anything else. And then this is a, a stroke brush that I learned from my friend, Herb Coyle, who is a very active urban sketcher. And she uses these for like windows and bricks or anything with a right angle. So these are like the, you know, the square tip size. So if Rosemary & Co. comes out, I think they actually have it this in like the travel size, I'm definitely grabbing one. <laughs> oh, we might actually have those in stock. I'll, uh, I'll check up on the, the link. Oh, and I see a question, Erica, we, um, we, we do have some new kit colors coming. So I'll just say to keep your eyes on, um, on our newsletter. Super limited edition green one that I'm so happy to snag. <laughs> yeah, you, you snagged one where that, that fabric, we had like one roll and we've learned better. Now we'll try and get at least two or three rolls. <laughs> I love this green one. It's like perfect because it goes really well with two of my favorite palettes. So I actually, my first palette from you guys, um, so going into the palettes, was actually the first colored one, the gold one you guys did with Drawn to High Places. And I've been meaning to join any of one of those meetups that you guys are hosting. But um, so this is the regular pocket palette size. And I just have a lot of colors in them. <laughs> and then my most recent staple is obviously the one that you guys collaborated with Travers Company that we did last year, this green one. And it's just so useful. Oh, I that keep, was a fun project. I keep this tin empty as a mixing palette for my phthalo blues because it stains everything else so bad. So just a tip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and now we need to get you. We have, um, since you made that palette, we have the little small mixing pans available. I know, but I didn't want the white surface because the phthalo blue stains. So I've been oh. just using the, the plain one. <laughs> <laughs> But then like, I also love like for, for urban sketching where I wanted to have more colors. I love this like folio size. So this is the one I use the most. And I put my own sticker in the front, <laughs> the, the Penguins Creative sticker. And, and so that fits perfectly into this, like, you know, this little, what is this size? Actually, I forgot like, the regular size. Little um, demi palette. Our toolkit. No, this like this pouch. It, I mean, it fits perfectly in there. And I also have this sun where I take to <laughs> for cafe journaling <laughs> when I go out to like cafes and like journal. And then this is like the, the super mini portable ones for when I just need to do though about small things. And you'll, you'll see what I mean when I talk about doodling small things. <laughs> Other favorite tools. I, I really like the spray thing you guys came out with. It's like super portable, fits right in here. I personally love using clips to hold down pages of my sketchbooks or journals. So I like using the Travers notebook one and um, I always keep some extra paper towel that I reuse over and over because, you know, when they dry out, it's like usable again. So, and then um, a pencil board for uh, clipping on palettes. Let me show you that my usual clipping method. Because usually when you're like urban sketching, you want to have everything at one place, right? <laughs> and then like you want to have your palette, you want to have paper towel, like clip onto your book. So I like using the Traverse Notebook pencil board, which is made of this hard plastic sheet. And then like I get my paper towel, I get the palette, I clip it with the clip and I even clip it onto my sketchbook, whatever I'm using at the time. So this is like an example of my Traverse Notebook that I use for outings. And I just clip it to a page. And then I could like dab, 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 clean, clean without worrying about the, the, the paint going through the paper towel to the other page and then paint on this side. So just kind of want to keep this here for reference. 
Oh, I, I realized I can't really zoom out. Let me see. Uh, oh, well, oh that's so perfect. I love the um I, I love the standing up. That's one of my favorite things that your stuff isn't gonna roll away and you know you've just got it all clipped there. And I see one question that um I can answer a little as well, but Christine is asking if um you've ever had problems with airport security with your art toolkit. And um I'll mention that I haven't, but I usually keep it at the top of my bag in case they're curious about it. And if I have any big metal things like a big metal ruler, sometimes they'll want to pull it. Um have you had any problems, April? No, I've I've taken with me on multiple international trips last year, actually, and it's never been an issue. Like, are you curious? Maybe the, maybe she's curious about like the material of the pigment. Maybe that could be an issue. But you know, aluminum stuff is not uncommon on flights. You know, so I don't think it should be an yeah. issue. And then finally, my favorite like drawing tools aside from the waterproof pigment ink pens is uh, fountain pens. So I use a Twisby Eco and in it, I have a waterproof ink from Sailor called Saboku, which I'll type out. Um, and it's like this blue black uh, ink, Saboku, yeah. And it's waterproof and I actually went a little bit geeky with my fountain pen and had a nib grinder adjusted my um hold on it's getting there a broad nib to a to a like a food a nib if you can tell it's like the nib is tilted upwards against the white background kind of hard oh my gosh I can't believe you had it ground that is so cool so it, oh, it's a little hard to see. It's a little out of focus, yeah. but it looks like it's like a, it's it's bent more like a sailor, like a food day. Exactly. It's a food day, essentially. And so this the Twisby fountain pen is my recommended go to for urban sketching because it holds so much ink. And then like when when you have a food day nib, you can do like, you know, thin and thick strokes. Right. So um, that's that's my little um, setup. And like, if I can, I would bring my full brushes, but I would use like a longer pouch to carry it. Those like waterproof long pouches, um, sometimes the block bags even, <laughs> but these are, you know, good enough for me, the pocket size. And so this, I would just like take this on a go and then with my sketchbook. So that's kind of <laughs> um, a simplification of my setup. And when I go on urban sketching out these, I just like, okay, I'll pick two to three of these, the fountain pen, you know, the unit pen and then water brush um, for journaling, for doodling in my journals, which I'll show you guys very quickly soon. Um, Cause it's like a more simple, no hassle part to painting. Like it distributes water out of the car the cartridge and then you can just use it with the little palette. So it's, these are my go-to supplies, nothing too special. And if you guys are curious about my paints, I usually use Daniel Smith and Holbein. And uh, I recently had the opportunity to experiment with my friends, um, Da Vinci, the, the American Da Vinci brand. Mm, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th those are what's in here. <laughs> but yeah. Someone, oh. yeah, that's right. Someone grounded to a food day nib. Um, my friend CY from Tokyo Station Pens, he's a nib grinder and he messes with fountain pens. So he, helps me oh adjusted it <laughs> are we allowed to, to share his contact info <laughs> oh no yeah actually he's gonna be at the california pen show that's coming up in february so he's actually flying in from japan and um coming to this pen show in los angeles in the second weekend of february and then he's gonna be offering nib grinding services so that's when a lot of people go and like look for him and have them adjust his snips so kind of cool <laughs> so uh, CY oh, San Fran? No, uh, Los Angeles. <laughs> I'll type out his contact. Tokyo Station. Yes. I think um, but there's good. there's a lot of people who I will recommend to for grinding nibs. Uh, there. So a lot of nib grinders in the stationary world would do that for your fountain pen. Oh, that is so cool. I love the customizing option of take getting a pen that you really might like the flow and handle of and, but you can tweak it and customize it and really make it yours. That's awesome. Right. So going, moving into the book part now, <laughs> I just wanted to kind of show you guys um, 
basically my thought process into how to do the sketchbook tidy. And so it always starts with like a why, like why, why do I want to do a sketchbook tidy and what is my intention? And so my background is obviously I work full time, so I'm not like a full time artist, but I do enjoy the hobby of painting and drawing because I feel like it's very um, liberating. It's kind of like us exploring how we are as a kid where we just draw and doodle and you know, express our creativity in like a stress-free way. And so when I started uh, in getting really into stationery, it was in 2014. And I started this like November, 2014, and I got a Hobonichi. And Hobonichi is this like planner from Japan. And they basically bound 365 pages into one book with this like super durable spine. And so you can actually journal every single day so it's like a diary that you can keep yourself accountable and then that's when I started mixing uh you know instead of writing about my diary what if I like draw little snippets of my adventures every day into this book so in my first Hobonichi I did so much watercolor um, and they're just like little doodles they're like the size of my <laughs> my palm they're not huge pieces at all but and I play with like you know um, regular watercolor with water brush and these are all kind of little bits and pieces that comes from it super stress-free super small low effort um, of like starting with the uni pin fine line and then slapping some color on it two layers maximum call it done but then once you kind of started accumulating this for a whole year, <laughs> it gets really, really satisfying to look at. So, you know, this oh, is that's my- amazing. And then it's a calendar format. So you can go through day by day. Do you ever miss a day and then go back and fill it in? Or you- Yeah, absolutely. Different? I do mm -hmm. that too. Like it's totally fine to miss a day with this Hobonichi because you can just always go back. And then I got so into it that I have not stopped using the Hobonichi for the past nine years, eight years, basically. So <laughs> this is just literally, um, this one's from 2016. This one's from 2017, 2018, 2021. And I, I, I started realizing that I do love by doodling and I enjoy, you know, kind of capturing my day with these little drawings that are super low effort, but then also helps kind of build the practice or start, it became a habit. Like it's like, it's fun to just doodle something about my life every single day, whether it is a full piece of studio art, it doesn't matter. I think this is when I went to the Urban Sketching Symposium in Chicago and I was just trying to replicate one of the techniques I learned in one of the workshops in like a super mini thumbnail form. Um, when I went climbing with my friends at Red Rocks um, in Las Vegas in Nevada and we, I like painted one of the scenes that we took from a photo. So not on location, a lot of these are really coming home at the end of the night, looking at the phone of the photo on your phone and then just trying to like, duplicate that effort so kind of I, I like I, I like bookmark a few pages I wanted to show you guys the progress of my um, experience throughout the year so this is inside the Amazon spheres um, the nest like kind of place and this is literally a drawing I came across on my phone on Instagram. Someone had a, this photo of the snow leopard holding onto its tail. So you can see how I'm like really not capturing things that happens in my own life, but just like things that comes into my life through like media or like little fun things as well. Um, how much time does it take for me to do my journaling? Um, like 10 to 20 minutes a day. You know, these are it's a single paragraph. It's not too much. And is every year the same size book? Yes. So actually how this work is, I grew, I love this Hobonichi so much and I write in it so much that I actually just one book is, it will get too big. So the company actually splits a whole year into two books. So this is the first half, January to June and then July to December. So this together is one year worth of book for me. And then like my most recent 2021, uh, not the most recent. And 
start drawing my dog. <laughs> and are you using other media? I see you've got watercolor and I just love the watercolors bring everything to life. And I see some like cute stickers and you had the nice little flip up, um, which looked like some washi tape. What are, are there some yeah. things that you like to carry to help like make your pages so immersive and fun? <laughs> it's a uh, it's a lot of things. I'm a I'm a stationary enthusiast, self confessed addict. Maybe um, I like have a huge collection of washi tapes, stickers, um, just things I kind of got into over the years, like celebrating literally the art of other artists and then having them in sticker form. And I also print out photos too, so kind of maybe a little scrapbooking. So this one has a, a combination of like, you know, stickers that I drew, stickers from other artists, tapes, illustrations, and I'll just cram into each page every day. And so these, these are literally... Uh, books just daily pages filled with you know my life in a nutshell uh, interpreted by cute kawaii stationery <laughs> yeah um and like it's it was it was hard in the beginning obviously when you have to like keep up with it every day 2015 like doing it in a small space helps build the practice and once you really get into it like me it starts becoming like, you know, it's just something I have to do <laughs> that to, to kind of make sure I keep a record of my life. And so this is, um, I have a photo on my Instagram account where I showed the stack of my Hobonichi from like the past eight years. And it's, I think a total of that, like, it's like more than um, 15 kilograms. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a wow. Lot I saw a question about just how much time you're you're kind of dedicating and do you have a, a ritual with like the time of day you like to work on your stuff or you just fit it in in the, the little moments in between so um these journals the, the that one was the with the journal part Hobonichi I spend like I said about 10 to 20 minutes a day like once you really like once habits are built, they're not hard, right? It's usually the initial part where you try to make a habit of it that it takes, it's a little time consuming. But for me, it's like my play time after work. So I enjoy like 20 minutes every night, just kind of catching up. I call it catching up in my Hobonichi, journaling about my day. And it's, you would think that during the pandemic, everyone's home, what is there to journal about? But I had things to journal about. So, you know, funny things my dogs did, you know, food I ate. My favorite thing um, to write about is food I ate. So, you know, little drawings of my meals, the food I prepared myself, things I see outside the kitchen window. I have a deck so I can see, you know, the waters as well. So the transition and different sky variations. And little things that you think um, this doesn't matter much could be very fun to capture. And I think that's like a big, big uh, turning point for me is like to be, to draw art, you don't have to draw like something that is supposed to look super good. You can just really draw anything you want. <laughs> so for example, I mean, we might get into this. I look at photos on my phone. So this is a, at a recent meetup and someone brought this really cool bottle of inks and it's like a cool uh, package design. So I will draw this into my book and it will take up like one quarter of this page space because it's so cool. And that's like something that's interesting, right? I had this really delicious profiterole. <laughs> from Trader Joe's while I'm watching this Japanese show. So I will I will want to draw this, me taking, having taken a bite out of this profiterole. So uh, things like this, um, my dog in his weird positions are also fun things <laughs> to do though and draw. Went to Starbucks Reserve one day and these like little um, pour over thingies look really cool. <laughs> so this could be one thing to draw. And then obviously when you had a good meal and the plating is stunning, like these are things that I, I would want to capture. So it's very easy to find topics is what I'm trying to get to. It's very easy to find topics that you want to try to capture or draw every day. Like if you think hard enough about it, there must be something in your day that's, that's really fun or or unusual or or ordinary that that can make it in and then at the end of the year when you flip back into that book you'll be like oh wow <laughs> I love that you give yourself permission to use photos too it's not necessarily about doing everything in the very moment but that you can oh take absolutely and yeah, some yeah reference and then go have your art time to just reflect and and enjoy the process 
exactly you don't want to like get caught up into what should I draw like the part of like coming to trying to come up with what you want to draw and then not knowing what it looks like like skip that hard part you'll copy <laughs> from your fo- photo phones and then like enjoy the fun part which is actually painting it <laughs> so um so I I like take a look at all my sketchbooks this is how many I have sorry about the thing is pretty zoom in but I think that's fine it's like we're not looking at big picture and I have many sketchbooks and many journals but there are some specifically that I really do a lot of doodlings into so I, I ended up uh, coming to the conclusion that I have five categories of places where I want to apply my sketching habit or doodling habits um oh wait let me answer that question which mini printer so I don't use a mini printer I use a printer <laughs> to print my photos <laughs> I buy uh label stickers with glossy paper that prints photo quality things. And I just, you know, assemble them on Microsoft words and print it out <laughs> with a color inkjet printer. So my first one is obviously the Hobonichi that I'm continuing this year. So this is my Hobonichi for this year. I usually decorate it. And then, you know, I, just a quick flip through of my already, what is it, 20 days so far. I journal some, I don't make it a thing to draw every day too. Like it's fine if you don't draw every day. There are days where it's busy and you can just slap a big piece of paper on it and call it a day. But there are some days where I love adding my meals. (laughs) Is there seven? (laughs) Maybe there's seven in there. (laughs) Five categories. There could be multiple sketchbooks in one category, just saying. So so like... um, even do those, you know, it doesn't have to be a drawing of anything. So like uh, there was, it was very nice on, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, the sky was very blue. And I thought, oh, I will pick up my little pocket palette art toolkit and then try painting without a sketch, like the color blending and stuff. This is a uh, Tomoe River paper, which is a paper developed in Japan. And it's very like fountain pen friendly. And what it does with watercolor is that color sits on it. It's not like... It's very thin, but surprisingly, it does not bleed through. Oh, wow, it's really hard to show. So I really enjoy using watercolor in this specific paper. Um, but obviously, it's not as good as cold press for like blending or layering or things like that. But it, it does well enough for me to do art in a book that like keeps my entire year together. So the Hobonichi is my first sketchbook of my Kaigi. This is the one where I'm going to capture parts of my day little things my dog po- poking out the window still like on the deck looking <laughs> across at the water this is my daily little practice and I'm gonna try to like ask myself to draw more instead of relying so much on like cutouts and stickers and stuff so every day for a little bit I'm like I'm gonna draw what I ate <laughs> it's gonna be fun so um, this is the first category of sketchbooks that I'm going to be using uh, as my art practice. The second category is actually what I do in my traveler's notebook. So I'm also a fan of this other system from Japan called traveler's notebook. Uh, and they're basically these leather or uh, leather covers. And inside you can have like these empty refills and they're in this like A5 slim size so it's very portable. It's kind of a little pocket book that you can hold in your hands. And as its name indicates, Traveler's Notebook, you kind of travel with it. People made it a thing to travel with it. So just to show you an example of my past refills. Can, can this you is show the one April too with Travelers? I think they're super flexible. So you, right, you can put in new inserts. That's and- right. You can mm-hmm. like take things out, put in new ones. So you just need a cover and then you can like basically keep switching things in like a new re- empty book you can make your own with watercolor paper so you has your favorite paper things like that and um you can tra- obviously this is for traveling but for me traveling is not limited to like traveling out on an airplane but more like okay I'm traveling to a nearby city I just went to I went to Hood River last year and like by driving and that for me is a little weekend trip but I obviously I'm not going to carry uh, my bulky Hobonichi with me <laughs> like it's too heavy so in this slim format I can journal and document you know things that happen on my trip my weekend trip to a new city or a new part of town or whatever 
and then like through little art. So this is kind of like my portable sketchbook in a way, but obviously I mix in journaling, I mix in stickers, like postcards I collect, and then it become like a fun little compilation of, of things that happened to me on the trip. So this is me hanging out with my friend and like we're having pizza and stuff. So, and I went to a bookstore, stuck the sticker in it. So the Travers notebook became like a, a traveling scrapbook slash sketchbook, if you will. I even saved the coaster. I stole the coaster, paper coaster they gave me when you order a drink. <laughs> so it's really fun to do things like this. Um, I think there was a scene. Oh, yeah, I painted the Ruena Crest view because it was so impressive. And obviously, I don't do this on location. Some of them I do, but most of them, I come back to the hotel. I sit down. I open my phone and check the photo and then paint, paint with it. But the point is, like, you're trying to build a habit, right? So don't pressure yourself into painting from your mind. Um, but just enjoy the part of process, the process of painting. And soon you realize because you start doing this little by little, painting becomes easier each time. And then you can really get to the cool, like more established work type. So this is the second category, travel sketching, if you will. Not urban sketching, travel sketching, where you, you travel or you go on trips, you, you spend some time to make specific threads outside your daily journals and you kind of capture them through through art. So that's my second category. My third category is not uncommon to those who are in the chat. Urban sketching. I love urban sketching. And my favorite sketchbook are Pentalix, but unfortunately they don't make them anymore. Or this is the brand Pentalix. Um, I love this because Stephanie Bowers in Seattle recommends them to us like back in 2016. <laughs> so I stocked up on a lot of Pentalix, but unfortunately I think this brand was like sold to someone else who makes pencils now. So the paper is like not as good as before, but it's co-press, rumored to be 100% cotton. <laughs> um, and I stick things in with just glue, glue, uh, glue tapes. I carry these with me all the time too. So this is GLOO, a brand by Kokuyo, a Japanese brand. And then this is the Mono, Tombow Mono, where you can get it at any art supply stores. But yeah, Obonichi can be purchased on Obonichi. All right. So my third category is urban sketching, my favorite thing. And so um, I use this, oh, sorry, it's a mess. <laughs> so I would take it out and then I would go on outings with local groups. If you if you're in the city and you look up their, the local urban sketching, uh chapters there's a lot and they're, they're basically a group of people who love drawing as a hobby and they get together on a weekend or something they go to one location and everyone you don't have to talk to anyone you just you just stand there or sit there and like sketch some things in the area alongside other people it's a very enjoyable thing to do and then at the end you like you put down your sketchbook everyone admires each other arts and then you leave and so it's a very low commitment kind of uh, practice to drawing on location and it's really really fun and so this is like one of the urban sketching places that I've been to um, the Starbucks Reserve Roastery in Cap on Capitol Hill and a lot of urban sketchers do the thing which I kind of really felt like was um, the same as what I do with journaling which is they sketch and then they write about it on the side and I'm like that's what I do in my homonichi <laughs> that's what I do in my journaling practice so that's why I thought there was this like mer like merging of my hobbies where you can do this on the journal on a notebook and you can also do this on the sketchbook and it also captures stories and like oh. you know, things like I that. love that April a friend of mine told me that a picture is worth a thousand words but it helps to write down what some of those words are yeah and exactly <laughs> <laughs> and I, I see someone mentioning that they feel intimidated with urban sketching meetups. And I would just say, just go. Everyone's so approachable. And it's so much about playing and practice um, um, just to dive in. And for those who are going for the first time, like it is very natural to feel weird about <laughs> people looking at you, <laughs> like random strangers on the street looking at you as you sketch. And it feels very weird. But let me, I promise you, after like two times, three times, you stop noticing it. It, it will go away. It's fine. <laughs> and a lot of these urban sketching groups are super welcoming and people are from all levels. So there's really no pressure at all. 
um, no one's there to like tell you you did a bad job. So don't worry about that. <laughs> and like, I also like to collect stamps. So urban sketching is going to be my third category of my sketching practice where I make it a commitment to go out and join urban sketching events and, you know, meet friends and then, or just like practice painting on location, um, which is the best part about urban sketching is that you, you don't, you feel a little freeing, like you're painting outside, you're not in the studio and you're with other people and people are doing this together. It's a very social event. I really like it. And so I use two books for it. I like this, actually three books. This is the one I got, to, I learned about from your store, the Hannah Miller, like the really pocket one. I don't know how to say the brand. It's the one with the rooster, Hannah, Hannah Moo, Hannah Muda. <laughs> I can't say. But anyway, super pocket size for if you are su trying to be super compact, um, quick sketches. So this is the one I, I take on like quick sketches. I make fun swatches with it as well. This is the more standard landscape size um, for urban that urban sketching ever sketchers really like because they could do like the long one at least in Asia that's like the trend people like to do long long sketches like what I did here with the with the roastery where it like crosses the page it has a more cinematic uh <laughs> effects to it and then I also like using the largest one this big big boy I think it's more than the a5 size and it's for like doing these huge practices my my favorite urban sketching event is during spring where we go out and paint the cherry blossoms in Seattle and that's when I was just like I would sit at the trunk of my car park underneath these trees and then just like capture um the watercolor of the cherry blossoms so this is when we went to the Ballard Locks I think that's right yeah, Hannibal has a like 100% cotton sketchbook, which I'm not sure if this one is, but it's, it's good enough. <laughs> and so these big ones gives me a lot more fun things to play with. Like I can make little thumbnail blocks to practice. Do This is like a warm up of my urban sketching that I did once because I haven't sketched in a while. And then it doesn't have to be big things like this too. You can also draw small things like this where it's just like a a focus, a zoom in of like something that happened on the same outing. So this is the tool I was using and I like stuck the, the, my coffee into the sand because we were on the beach. So I just thought it was cute and there was like a duck. So <laughs> um, urban sketching has that charm to me where you can like draw anything you want. So these three belongs into my third category of art practice, the urban sketching part. And then I have two more categories that I wanted to kind of do more this year. The first one is um, more studio work. So more with urban sketching, it could be a little bit rushed because you're out there, the watercolor is drawing very fast or not drawing fast enough. And then, you know, there's a time constraint because you meet up at the people at very, the very end. But there's some times when I just want to really try to like do a piece of work, like with photo reference, obviously. So these are two that I've, then with photo reference, this sketchbook, by the way, is from Stickerific, which is a store in Malaysia. And they basically bound this paper called Baohong, which is um, Bao, Baohong, I think. I don't know if you heard of it, but it's a Chinese artist grade watercolor paper pad. And they're very affordable. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. And then they come in like pads usually, but Stickerific, because they're based in Asia, they, they use the paper and they bound it into the sketchbook. So it's like it writes, it, sorry, it paints almost like the arches co-press. So the almost the similar quality. So you can do really fun wet on wet blending without worrying about, you know, the drying. So this is what I consider myself like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to work on like more elaborate pieces of work uh, with the same quality grade as the artist who works in studios and stuff. But then I still end up drawing little fun things like this <laughs> where I like, you know, doodle and paint this drink I had and playing with color. This is like a photo reference of um, strawberry sandwiches. People in Japan like to make these super creative sandwiches with like fruits inside. Um, this is like kind of from a marketing photo from Starbucks, Japan. <laughs> so really playing with it. Um, I use it for urban sketching sometimes too, but like recently um, I've been meaning to 
practice more with studio work. So I, I am starting a commitment to stream every Saturday morning on my streaming channel on Twitch, twitch.tv slash penguins creative. And I just sit down with people watching me and I just paint for two hours and then like try to do one work and trying to be more elaborate about my thought process, um, being more careful with how I, you know, land my brush. Unlike when I do urban sketching where I just stab wherever. <laughs> and then these, these are great, great works that I'm really proud of and obviously could, could practice more. And this is the opportunity where I mimic other artist styles. I try to actively apply techniques I've seen on YouTube. Um, really just like trying to do what other people are doing um, and like applying it to my my own style. And so this is the one where I play with glittery paint from Dominant Industries. So you can see the glitter. It's like out of focus. So you can see the glitter <laughs> on the horizon of the water. So, so things like these. Um, so this sketchbook has become my studio work sketchbook. And obviously not really needing a sketchbook. I also have like Arches co-press paper, there are loose sheets. I also love using uh, Fabriano's studio grade 25% cotton loose sheets as my studio practice too. So that's the fourth section. And then the last one is really just experiments. <laughs> I want to use up these damn sketchbooks and play with all my watercolor. <laughs> so I have this one where I just like, I just watch, I make mock little drawings. I like, I think not just this one, but I I really love this one thing that the Daniel Smith website has been doing, which is like, they they have a mixing Wednesday or something. And this artist brings out two tubes of pigment and then mixes it in water. So I want to start doing that uh, on the excess page of my countless sketchbooks. Um, like this is the other one that I use. This is the Traverse Notebook, actually. Traverse Company Spire Ring Bound Watercolor Sketchbook. And then I just like, not just watercolor, but like random sketches. Oh, I actually took this to our outing last year when we went to the, <laughs> the boat, center wooden boats. This was done in like five minutes. So it's like super rush. And I was trying to practice like a, a flat, you know, just try to do a flat kind of like spread um, little snippets here and there. So no commitment. I'm not trying to achieve anything cool. I'm just trying to see how I can like play with some certain techniques. So little sketchbooks like these that I have not been bringing to urban sketching or like doing any other things. I can like try to just have fun with it. I'm going to do some color mixing on this. I love swatching colors in my palettes too, things like that. So that that's my final section. So all my sketch, sketchbook ID, I have basically all these separate sketchbooks. Oh my gosh. I made a plan. <laughs> will, you, will you bring up your face camera and just hold up all these sketchbooks for us to see? And then I think oh. we should just do like a little recap of your one, two, three, four, five, because I love that you've got categories and have organized them. Because like, for a certain type of brain, it's nice to have like a little system. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay. <laughs> so, so do a little like quick review for us of the, the five yes. categories, just so we've got it all straight. <laughs> so the first one is the daily journaling doodle practice with the, in my Hobonichi. Um, this is the first half of the year. The second section is the travel and intentional kind of capturing of my memory through little doodles so they go in my traverse notebook and I I typically do this when I'm sitting at a cafe or winding down at a hotel or wherever I'm staying so this is the traverse notebook category painting and traveling and then I obviously have my urban sketching outings so the urban sketching sketchbooks dedicated to going to meetups actively going to the weekly or bi-weekly hosted events by local chapters and then Kind of, I usually bring two just to see how my whim because I paint pretty fast, so I can probably do two to three <laughs> in a session. So these are the the ones that I play with, and then I have my more serious studio work, kind of um, 
commitments to improving my techniques because when I'm urban sketching and doodling I don't want to think about techniques <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to like pressure myself to do execute certain artistic strategies but maybe in the studio ones I want to like kind of be, be a little or focus on how I can you know mimic or learn from this artist style there's a lot of urban sketchers out there with so many different techniques and I just love kind of wanting to take some time to mimic my recent inspiration is still Renato Pamudi <laughs> from that Brazilian art urban sketcher, one of my favorite styles. And then the last one, sketchbooks just to have fun with. So playing with watercolor, seeing how colors mix, um, experimenting with little scenes. Uh, one of my little experiment projects is that I wanted to, like I've been watching so many films and shows on Netflix and some of them have really cool cinematic like scenes where it was like, oh, I want to screenshot this. So like this is one from this Korean show where this boat was like parked on top of this like night view. And so mm. I tried to replicate that. And this one's from the show called The Makanai that's recently on Japan. It's like features this... Um, old school Kyoto retro vibe and the kitchen. So I was like trying to emulate that soft light. So fun experimental sketchbooks. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> April, I'm I'm blown away. And I think like a big theme that I'm just seeing here is like you show up. It's like show up to your sketchbook. And whether it's like making a little doodle or pushing yourself to learn or to play or to like show up with people, you just, you show up and practice. And it's amazing to see your work. You've got a, your work is beautiful. And I'm, I'm incredibly inspired by your practice, April. Um, and I do see a question that people want to know if like they can buy your work at all. Or um, I know I mentioned a few ways to stay in touch and we'll update the description of this um, video too. So people can follow That's so you. so funny because I was about to say, see, it's so funny that I spend so much time on this, but I actually don't sell anything. <laughs> like I'm not trying to make a living <laughs> off art. It's so, I think it's liberating to just feel like you can play with mm -hmm. art as an adult. Like, so, so I, it brings so much enrichment into my daily life you know, in, in this age where you're like, it's all about is it your career or your family or stuff. Like it's, this is my time for myself. And I, I love that. I, I, I geek out so much over these things. <laughs> oh, well, it's inspiring and contagious. And, um, well, I'm, we'll, uh, be sure to post your Instagram and your stationary cafe, and we've got your, your Twitch. So if people want to get on and, and paint with you and, um, um, I did see one final question too, people saying, how do you find meetups? And I know there's the Urban Sketchers website and then you can often find local Facebook groups. Do you have any other suggestions? Um, I, I branch out mostly from my stationary groups. So yeah, with the Urban Sketching, I search on Facebook. There's usually many chapters, but I think there's a urbansketchers.org uh, website where you can actively go see if your city's on it and then you can find the details of the local chapters. So that's a great way to go for urban sketching and then for art one I I've been hosting my stuff where I find like kindred spirits on Instagram um who enjoys painting and I reach out and sometimes uh actually during the beginning of the pandemic I was I was so searching for this community that I started hosting like weekly zoom meetups where I just paint something and people could follow along and that's how I came to learn uh met a lot of friends and and then we start doing a physical, like I call it painting parties. Daniel Smith <laughs> used to do that with the watercolor Saturday where you can go and then just like use your paint. So I've been making it a thing to sometimes meet with friends who are into art to just go to a Starbucks together and we just paint at the cafe. Oh, oh I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's not like we're urban sketching or anything. We're literally painting our own thing, like literally from yeah. photos or things. So oh. Yeah. Well, your enthusiasm is contagious and I'm so grateful for you for jumping on and helping to give us all inspiration to think about how to go for this year. And um, I, uh, yeah, can't wait to, to see more and everyone who joined us um, this morning, thank you so much or this afternoon and we'll have the, um, the stream available. So if you missed part of it or want to, want to see the rest that's, that's available and um, follow April and follow us along to, to see what else we have with our live demos and workshops. And um, we're just so grateful this, for this community. And April, I'm so glad you're a part of it. So thank you again so much for sharing with us. And sign up for the Art Token newsletters to get new product <laughs> notifications. <laughs> yeah, we love sharing inspiration once a week. And um, 
uh, always, always have new things to share and announce. And we, we just really appreciate everyone here. All righty. Well, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye. Woo! Yay. <laughs>